But what most people are experiencing, and everybody thinks everybody has a demon. Some people do if they gave themselves to Satan. No, I'm serious, they really do. I've seen deliverance service where I don't care who you are, they want to cast devils out of you. Most of the time, it's the deposits in your soul that are causing you to act that way. And that's why when you do deliverance, do deliverance, they don't change. It's because they need to loose that deposit out of their soul that was made by whatever they got involved in. It can eventually become that because the word talks about it. And I have done both for years, uh, broken soul ties and got junk out of people's souls. But I didn't know about the layers. It makes it much easier to understand that that's why kids kill kids. They have deposits in their soul by the stuff they've been watching. And even, even the psychiatrists know that. They don't know about the layers, but they do know that if you feed on something long enough, it's going to affect your what? And your mind is your what? It's your soul. So it makes sense that whatever you watch or are a part of, it will affect the way you think. But, but the Father's showing me that we have layers in our soul and whatever we watch or we go places you make deposits in your soul that's why the movies are so dark right now if you want to go to the movie theater there's almost nothing i'll go see i'm very aware of what i go and see before i watch it i want to know what's in that thing because i don't want that stuff in me and whether you believe it or not you're going to be affected by it and this is the good news. I always encourage people, God's about to have his own movies produced. They're actually saying in the newspapers and on TV that Hollywood is having a revival. I went there. I've had eight meetings there. Laid hands and released the fire of God into actors, actresses, producers, script writers, special effects people. The first group came. There were about 80. The next time there was 400. And they were changed. And they won't want dark stuff. They won't want dark scripts anymore. And you know what's funny? They've just about done away with God in society and in our culture. That's the enemy's plan, by the way. It's not man's, but man helps them. He helps them. And on Fox News, they were actually talking about that, that the movies that they've been producing on the PBS about the Bible, I know they've embellished it in some areas to make it more exciting, but you got to remember they don't know what actually happened. And so they're trying to make the script look good. They've been pretty accurate. But they're saying 14.2 million young people are watching those series. Young people. Young people. And they're overwhelmed because for the first time in their life, they're actually finding out who Jesus is. And they're finding out about all the stuff in the Old Testament. And they are loving it. That's encouraging. And they're all discussing, well, you know, some of these kids, the first, they'll be the first generation that ever heard about God because they stopped talking about him. They don't even know who he is. They don't want to come to church and hear about it. But they're all watching it on television. And God is going to know. I'm sure he was behind all that. But I'm talking about movies that are exciting, intense, funny, amazing, but no garbage in them. Because there's good moral people that aren't even believers that are sick of the junk that's being put out there. But this is why they're doing it. God said their soul is filled with darkness. So that's how they think. So that's why the script writers write the dark scripts. That's why the producers want to produce them because there's darkness in them. What, they're filled with darkness. What's going to come out is darkness. He said, but if I get them and change them and they're filled with light, it's going to change what they make in Hollywood. So instead of, you know, sending fire from heaven and destroying them all and sending them to hell, God has a better plan. Because Hollywood impacts our entire society, doesn't it? And there's a difference, I'm just going to let you know this, there's a big difference in a fantasy and a spiritual lie that's being made. Harry Potter is a spiritual lie. And they're dangerous. If you watched it today, we're going to loose it all from your soul because it was certainly deposited seeds of witchcraft in there. The reason why it's dangerous is because a fantasy, none of the characters are real, okay? None of those characters exist now. They never existed. 
it's a, it's a story, whether it's fun or what it's about. It usually does have good versus evil in it, but the good usually triumphs, okay? That's, that's a fantasy. If it doesn't have other garbage in it, then it's okay to watch. You don't want all the other junk in there. Unfortunately, they've been putting a lot of it in there. But there are some really good, fun movies out there. You have to hunt for them. Those are the ones I go and see. But things that are telling you something that's not true, that's dangerous, I'll tell you why Harry Potter's dangerous. It shows you that there's good witchcraft and there's bad witchcraft. And that is a lie. How many people say, everybody say, that's a lie. That's a lie. And yet everybody watches it. What you watch put seeds in you. And whether you believe it or not, because you willingly watched it, you got seeded with those things in you. And the reason why it's dangerous is because one day on this earth, some of the lying signs and wonders the enemy will use to get people is that there is good witchcraft because they heal, they raise the dead, they teach you to levitate on your lunch hour, and they're good. And you can belong to them instead of Jesus Christ. And they've been seated for years because they've been watching it. How many people get that? Let me see your hands. I do not watch any movies that show good witchcraft, good warlocks, good wizards. Those things are real. That's the difference in a fantasy. Witchcraft is real. If you don't know, there's covens everywhere. They, they do serve the enemy no matter what they say. They all have rituals and things. They sign their self to him. They really do belong to him. They're real. There's real warlocks. There's real wizards. Those things are real. And they all belong to the darkness. So the enemy wants movies made that make them look like there are good ones and there are bad ones. But that is not a good movie because they're, they're bringing a lie to you and people are receiving it. And actually, people got almost drunk on those movies. The father said the world is drunk on the wine of Harry Potter witchcraft. That's, those are his words, not mine. They're drunk on the wine of Harry Potter witchcraft. And he said they did celebrations and parties all about it. They wanted to be his image. And yet that's not good. That is not a fantasy. That is a lie that the enemy is trying to feed you. And God is opening people's eyes. This has to do with the spirit realm. It's not just something you're watching. That's a portal, that screen. That's a portal. Your TV screen is a portal. The movie screens are portals. The iPhone, these are portals. These are all portals. A portal is something you can see something through and receive something through. And whatever you decide to watch, that gets deposited in your soul. And that's why so many homes are being torn up. That's why they're being torn up by adultery, by murder, by alcohol, by drugs, by horrible language. Because they fill their atmosphere of their home with it when they watch it. Those are spirits attached to everything that's made. And they, they have the ability, because they're spirits, to enter in it. Now, if you watch the good things... You can have joy, fun, excitement deposited in you, and it's going to be expressed in the way you live your life. And if you fill yourself with enough of the darkness, you're going to start making decisions that would not be God's decisions. You're going to think on things that drag you into more of that stuff because it's in your soul. You fill your soul with it. And God said that there should only be light in you but he said, when you begin to put darkness in you, and if the darkness you have is the only light you have, how great is that darkness? That's what he's talking about. Because the darkness is going to pull you into more darkness. And that's why some people marry somebody who's abusive. They divorce them. They marry someone else just like them. And they divorce them and marry someone else just like them and divorce them. And you know what it is? Deposits in their soul. The thing that's different about... That kind of relationship, when you have a physical relationship with other people, when you get married, you actually give a layer of your soul to that person. It's tying the knot, and they give a layer of them to you. So you're carrying around this other person's. That's why when someone dies, you grieve so bad. If family members, you make relationships with each other. Those are emotional relationships, but you can make an so emotional soul tie. That's why you grieve if you love them so much. Because you're, you're tied together. It's about your soul. But when you have an abusive relationship and that stays inside of you, it will drag you because it affects your what? 
thinking and your choices. And if it's in there, it'll pull you into the same kind of relationship over and over. If you're hooked on an addiction, if you're addicted to something, you get a layer of that addiction deposited in your soul and it pulls you back into the same thing over. This is what the father told me. He showed me what a human soul looked like. He said, now I'm gonna tell you how it operates so my body can be free and stay free. And it actually explains why people do things. And he said, when they get addicted to something, they gave themselves to it. And then when they get that addiction deposited in here, that that's in you gives you the craving for it. And you want more and more. And the more you put in, the more it affects the way you think, the way you live your life. Then you become oppressed, depressed, because you can't have what you are desiring on the inside of you. And it all has to do with your soul. Let's all say this scripture together. I desire above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Now let's turn it around. Even as your soul prospers, you will prosper and you will be in health. That's why the body of Christ is sick, depressed, and fearful because they're putting all that junk in their soul. And they cannot prosper if your soul is not whole. He wants your soul whole. Tonight, everybody's soul is gonna be whole. And the thing is this, you may watch stuff after your kids go to bed, but you let it in the house. I'm sorry to tell you that, but you are in charge of the atmosphere of your home. That's why there's such accountability with the head of the house that the enemy's been going after for years. If he can get stuff into him, he lets it in his house. Unfortunately, that we are and our kids are affected by it, which isn't, people say it's not fair, but you know what? God sets you to be a covering and a protector and to raise your child in the admonition of the Lord. He didn't ask you to raise them with the world filled with them. And I'm not saying you can't have fun. I don't know of anyone that wants you to have more fun than God. If he plans to have fun with you in heaven, he wants you to have fun down here. We need to start using our creativity to make things that are fun, right? According to a U.S. consumer research survey, over half of all children between the ages of six and 17 have read at least one Harry Potter book. While many parents are thrilled by the prospect of their children taking an interest in reading, other parents and educators view Harry Potter as the latest tool being used to disciple children into the darkest aspects of black magic. Should parents be concerned that the alluring power behind witchcraft is being made to look innocent and is being targeted towards their children through the Harry Potter phenomenon? Many argue that Harry Potter is just merely children's fantasy and therefore it's harmless. The lie about this is that witchcraft is reality. My deepest concerns and fears about Harry Potter is the teaching of human sacrifice, pagan religions, Celtic religions, the sucking of blood from dead animals, witchcraft, possession by spirit beings. Satanism, blood sacrifices, uh, wands, robes, owls, Latin words. So here are the children and the readers, the Harry Potter and all his teammates in the schools, and the children that are reading the Harry Potter books being introduced to the darkest and black arts. And if they're not reading, by the way, there are cassettes that Scholastic puts out. And we know that there's such a thing as possession because Voldemort possesses the Defense Against the Arts teacher in the book where he's sucking the unicorn. And perhaps the curses in Harry Potter's books aren't legitimate curses, but once again, they can go to the websites to get legitimate curses. So the element of fear is taken away. Thousands of young fans demonstrate their allegiance to Harry by taking the mark of the lightning bolt on their own foreheads. The lightning bolt is a mark of power from the god Thor. And this lightning bolt was considered so important in occult mythology that Hitler used it. Many parents don't recognize the danger of witchcraft because they look at their experience and they didn't experience that when they were growing up. 
They relegate witchcraft to Africa or some foreign country. Those in Wicca take great joy out of seducing Christian children into Wicca. But Christian children are usually easy prey. While the reading of Bible-based material is banned in American schools, the religion of witchcraft, repackaged through Harry Potter, is given honorable status and a strategic position. It is made to be humorous and beautifully written and extremely provocative reading and it just opens up children. It is horrible. By not letting the enemy enter into your home through the television, through the computer. When I look at those places, they're all portals. You choose with your will what you watch with your eyes. Your eye is a window to the soul. That means whatever you watch is going to enter into your soul. It will affect the way you think, the things you choose. Even psychiatrists know these kids doing these violent acts watch violence. But that's not the only thing that gets in your, in your soul. Anything else, witchcraft, vampires, sensuality, profane language, every time you watch that stuff, it enters into your soul. It makes a deposit in your soul. And that's going to affect and make you choose the same thing. What God is doing is showing us the way he made your soul. There are layers in your soul. Deposits are made in those layers. When you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, he puts a deposit of the anointing in there because you gave yourself to him. A deposit of him is put in you. It's the anointing. When you give yourself to a drug, a deposit of that addiction is placed in your soul and it makes you choose with your will the same thing over and over and over. That's how it works. That's why people struggle to be free because they're pulled in here into it. The same thing with pornography. That's why when you look, a deposit is made, what's in here will cause you to choose with your will because that's your soul. Your mind, you'll think on it. Your will, you'll choose it. Every time you choose it, another deposit is made until you're filled with it. How many people think that makes sense? When you fill yourself with the Word of God, the life of God, when you love people, it's all deposited in your soul. When you speak life to people, it's deposited in your own soul, even though you're speaking it to them. When you say things to your kids, it's deposited in your soul. And then go to sleep at night and you can watch the other stuff on TV. It gives an entrance into your home and it will affect them. Because you're the covering, and whatever the head lets in is going to come in. And you need to realize that, and we all need to be accountable for our lives if you want your life to change, because the word clearly says he desires above all things that you prosper and be in health, not sick and healed, sick and healed, sick and healed, is called divine health. There is a requirement. Even as your soul prospers. And if you fill it with the world and you fill it with darkness, it cannot prosper. And one of the main reasons why the body of Christ is in the place they are is they've been filling themselves with all the wrong stuff. Say amen. amen. If you, Father showed me a human soul. He showed me one. It's actually beautiful. It's a spiritual thing. It has a core, a beautiful core with all details on it. It's your will. There's a spine that runs up through there to the mind. That's your mind. There's layers, like if I took a book and put it back to back, and every page would look like a transparent image of you. And these layers move like this around the will. Those layers are also your emotions. And in between all those layers are where the deposits are made. So if you give yourself to something, you take a layer and it's gone. And some people have no feelings and no emotions because they gave themselves away. And his very thought and his desire is to kill, steal, and destroy everybody and everything he can that belongs to God. Ah. That's why it says, guard your heart, for out of it flow the issues of life. You be careful what you watch with your eyes. It goes in there. 
Be careful what you listen with your ears. It goes in there. Be careful of the places you enter into because whatever you enter into is going to enter into your life. That's one of the Holy Spirit's most famous quotes in heaven. Here's another one. God didn't send his son to die for this world so you could have grace to freely sin. He sent his son to die for this world so you could have grace to be free from sin. And there actually right now is a message that's being given in the body of Christ. Sin all you want to without repentance because the grace covers it all. And it's being taught in some Christian colleges. If you will allow the enemy to deceive you, deception will take over you. That's why you stick to the word of God. No, no spiritual encounter, no trips to heaven, none of that will ever make up for having the word of God on the inside of you. I will encourage every person here, you need to read the word of God. If it's in you, he can breathe on it, he can bring revelation on it, he can bring it to life, it will be living to you, you can apply it to your life, and it will do something. Because whatever you actually give yourself to, what you're doing is giving a layer of your soul away. You don't sell your soul to the devil, you give it away. That's why the soul tie was made. So what is, what is, what is God going to do about it? You just loose it. It's called deliverance. It's called being set free. It's called breaking addictions, breaking soul ties. You can make a soul tie with a person, place, or thing. You can make a soul tie with an addiction. That means you gave yourself to it, it got deposited in your soul, that's a tie. That tie brings you back to it again and again. You can be in an abusive marriage. You divorce that person, but you had a deposit in here. If you didn't get it out, you marry the same kind of person because it draws you to the same person. Marry that person, they abuse you, you divorce them, you have another deposit. <laughs> you marry another person. Why do people do that? Because whatever is in here will affect what you choose. So what do you do? Get it out. Everybody stand up please. It is the keys to the kingdom. What you bind to yourself on earth will be bound in heaven. You can, bind, you can bind good things or you can bind the other stuff. Whatever you lose from yourself on earth will be loosed in heaven. So you don't want to lose the good stuff. So what are you going to lose? All the other stuff. All the words you spoke that you shouldn't have spoken to other people. Or the things you said about yourself. We don't have money. We don't have a home. I don't have a job. What am I going to do? We can't do this. We don't have that. Stop saying that. Stop saying it. You shall have whatsoever you say. You declare in faith. What do you declare and decree will and shall be established unto you. If you want your life to change, the atmosphere in your home to change, change what you are saying. Say amen. amen. In heaven, you know how they pray for us? They declare and decree over you. And just to give you all a little tip, if you, if you walk around saying, Father, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. There are no witchcraft in heaven. There are no vampires in heaven. It is not a fantasy. It's real. That's the other side of the spirit realm. See, there's only bad evil. There's no good evil and bad evil. There are no good witches and bad witches. There are no good vampires and bad vampires. They all represent the enemy. And if you watch it and listen to it, you open yourself up. Whatever you enter into, whether it's from watching or reading or listening, it will enter into your life. And this is revelation the Father's offering you. And a lot of people will tell you it's fantasy, it isn't anything. Yes, it is. The Bible talks against witchcraft. It says, have nothing to do with it. They cast it out of people in the Bible. Okay, they cast unclean spirits out. That's every kind of sexual sin. An unclean spirit operates in every bit of it, whether it's homosexuality, prostitution, any of it. It's an unclean spirit. 
That's what they do. And if people could see who was meeting with them when they were having a secret little meeting together, they would both run. So they are real. They're real. They're as real as the angels in heaven, and they operate in your life waiting for you to be tempted. Now, you can't necessarily stop the temptation, but you don't have to take it. When you listen to music that belongs to the enemy, and now there's some people, religious people, that say if it's not, you know, Christian music is, is the enemy's. No, that's not true. God created music to be enjoyed. There's many beautiful forms of music, fun forms of music, but I'm talking about the ones that the satanic bands play. The words create. If they are not words of life, if they are words that the enemy would want you to do, like killing and marring and suicide and all these ungodly things that stuff the enemy uses and it enters into your life you watch things on the internet windows there are windows and doors in the spirit realm there are computer screens there are television screens there are movie screens and you can't see it but when you go into places and watch that stuff they come out of the screen and they will go home with you Whatever you watch or allow to be watched in your presence, you're approving of it. That's what God says. You approve of it. If you receive it, it's going to come with you. And it may not make you go to hell, but it will mess up your life like you're living there. So if you've had a lot of things come in your life and you don't know why, and you've been into Harry Potter, if you've been into Pokemon, I'm just telling you what heaven's saying. Think about what they do. Those pets do one thing, they war. They were made and created to release violence, spirits of violence. And their, in their nature and their origin comes from Japan. And the makers of them have them evolve. They haven't got to their final, their final evolving will be demonic beings that the kids won't mind having with them. Because they've been trained from the time these little things, these cute little pets appeared. It will bring strife in your home. It will bring a lot more than strife. It will bring rebellion in your children. It will bring eventually hate into your children. And I've seen kids beat their parents and scream at them. I was on a plane one time and the father had to sit on this five-year-old. And he was screaming and swearing. And trying to hit his parents and the father was laughing as the mother gave the Pokemon color books to the other two children behind her. And the Holy Spirit said, that's what you get in your home when you get Pokemon. Those are spirits that war, that represent war, they represent violence, and they're put into the children when they're little, and they can control them. It is not a fantasy. It is one of the greatest deceptions of the enemy, but he always covers things up so they look wonderful. I mean, he wants it to look friendly. He's not going to tell you this is evil, it's for me, and if you get it, you're going to be affected by me. He never does that. It's like when he puts thoughts in your mind and you think it's you and it's the enemy talking to you. Take every thought captive that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. That's how they get a stronghold in your mind. That's how depression gets in. He starts telling you how awful you are, you're worthless, nobody cares about you, you can't do anything. Those are not from God and they're not from you, they're from the enemy. Don't take them. We're going to break the power over all those spirits that have been infecting your life. Don't go there no more. It isn't that you can't have fun in this world. You make the right choices. But if you don't realize this stuff is from the enemy, and you know why? See, God's revealing it now because he wants you to be free from that, to operate in the fullness of his power. You can't operate in the fullness if you're, if you're taking things of the enemy home with you and you don't know it. God is about to release in this earth the truth about the spirit realm. And there will be movies made that will curl the hair on people's heads. And there will be God movies because when they go in and watch them, they'll get the spirit of God on them and the blindness will be removed and they'll realize all along what they've been being a part of. Because he will show them how they operate. What I'm telling you, it will be made into movies and people will race in to see them. If they, want the, if they want the spirit realm, he's going to give it to them. They want the supernatural, he's going to show it to them. But it, what it will do is reveal and expose the enemy. So get ready because it will be coming to the theaters and you can go and see that all day long. 
So right now we're going to repent one more time. And I'm not going to tell you you can't. I don't have the right to say you can't do that no more. I just told you what will happen if you do it. So you decide. You want to help the one that wants to kill you and take your family to hell? Or do you want to stop that stuff from coming in your life and look for the good stuff? Because you're supposed to have fun on this earth, but you represent him. You become the face of heaven. And if you want his will done on earth as it is in heaven, no witchcraft. No vampires. And there's a lot more stuff than that, but you're just getting some of the The game Warcraft, stop playing it if you're playing it. It'll possess you. People are dying from playing it. It so controls their life, they won't eat, they won't sleep, they won't let their family members eat or sleep if they're doing that game. It's controlling them. If you don't know what that is, it's a warring game, of course. It's always about violence. It's warring on the internet, and other people can come in and you, you portray characters in this battle. But what do you think the word craft means? It's still witchcraft. War, craft. So you, you can't, you know what, the good thing is this. God is about to, he is going to invade the entertainment industry. And there will be games that you can play that will bring God in your life and reveal the enemy in people's lives and you get taken to higher levels in God's realm. They're already being developed. So God is going to change. It will be different living on this earth than it is now. But that's why you need to know God. That's why the elect can be deceived because they're already taking the things of the enemy in their life and just because it gets worse doesn't mean they're going to get rid of it. Because they've already embraced deception. That's why the enemy deceived himself. He still operates the same way. He hides it and covers it up. And even the copycat miracles that will be done during this great outpouring, you'll be walking through a park and see people levitating. And they say, come, you can be a part of us. You can still sin. You know, our leader has power. And they literally will be doing that. They'll be, they'll be getting people healed. And all Satan does is remove the disease off he put on them. So, see, you will be deceived. Some people will deceive and think, hey, I can have it all. And it's a lie. So you need to know the difference. So that's what God's giving revelation about the spirit realm so you know the truth about it. So, Father, Father I, repent I repent for taking in things of the enemy, for taking in things of the enemy going, to going to places I shouldn't have gone, watching things I shouldn't have watched, Taking part, of his realm home with me. Taking part of his realm home with me. I renounce, I renounce any association, any association with, witchcraft with witchcraft or any other demonic power, or any other demonic power that, I took in, that I took in, not knowing it was the enemy. I will no longer do this. And I break his power, break his power over my life my body, my, body my, mind, my mind, my spirit, my, spirit, my, home, my home, my family, my, family, my, finances, my finances, my health. My health. In, Jesus name, In Jesus' name, I am free. I am free. 